Dementia and hearing loss are tightly linked. We don't hear with our ears, we hear with our brain. I'll explain more about that later. I'm Deborah Costu. I'm so happy you showed up again. Thanks for tuning in. I'm so proud of each of you for being present and engaged. It's hard to take even 10 minutes, but you know how important this is to get tips and strategies. And I applaud you for meeting with me all the time. You are the best group on YouTube. A quick shout out to some of you who have recently subscribed or left a comment or a question. Callie, you are going through some super tough situations. Watch the two videos, the driving videos, for some detailed tips and keep strong. You're looking at alternatives and solutions. Just keep going. You really are doing great. Renee, thank you for your kind words of encouragement after viewing my story, what I wish I knew before my brother killed my mom. It was so sweet of you. And Philip and Gravy Balls, <laughs> Thanks for saying hi and sharing that the videos are helpful to you. I really appreciate all of your comments and questions. Keep them coming. I try my best to reply to every single comment. Uh, you are all part of my family. Please let me know what other topics you want and make sure that you subscribe. And please send your specific questions about behaviors. I'm going to collect your questions about difficult behaviors for an upcoming episode. So comment down below for me about your struggles and questions about behaviors that you're dealing with. Be part of the upcoming Answers About Alzheimer's show. So let's get down to business. Today, we're gonna spend the segment talking about the effects of hearing loss and dementia. A study through John Hopkins tracked 639 adults for 12 years. During this very lengthy study, it was found that those who experienced moderate hearing loss doubled the risk of developing dementia. And those with severe hearing impairment were five times more likely to develop dementia. Is that not shocking to you? That is absolutely mind blowing. My husband wears hearing aids. It took me and my daughter years to convince him to do something about it. Those of you who have spent any time with a person with hearing deficits knows firsthand how frustrating this is. <laughs> yeah, I see all of you out there nodding your head. You end up screaming so that they can hear you and then they get mad because you're yelling at them and you're rolling your eyes they respond to you with an answer to your question that makes absolutely no sense. And it's so, so frustrating. What do you want for dinner? Yes. What? Oh my God. Or the dreaded, you never told me that. Oh, and the TV. Don't even get me started on how loud the TV is. I've even had several people tell me that that's a big complaint of neighbors in assisted living and independent living communities, that the lady next door's TV is so loud. Hearing loss can create a multitude of problems like walking and falls, isolation, misinterpreting information from doctors and medications instructions, and it can strain even the very best of relationships. But left untreated, hearing loss greatly, and I mean greatly, increases your risk of dementia. So for all of you out there, it might be too late for your loved one. I don't know. But remember this, when people start to tell you, you need hearing aids, don't wait. Run to the audiologist because you are smarter than dementia. Brain scans have shown that hearing loss may contribute to a faster rate of brain atrophy, which is where the brain shrinks inside the skull. Atrophy occurs with the loss of brain cells and the loss of neurons to be able to communicate with each other. So as we age, everyone will suffer from hearing loss to some degree. It usually sneaks up on you. 
it's gradual. So you won't really notice it yourself as much as others might. I remember the day when my husband got his first pair of hearing aids. Our appointment was late in the afternoon, so we decided to go to an early dinner on the way home. We got in the car and he was driving and he says to me, what's that noise? I asked, what noise? He said, it's like a buzzing or a humming. I said, the heater? Oh my God, it's the car heater. When we were at the restaurant, he was just noticing every little noise that he hadn't heard apparently in years. He went to scratch his head and was beyond himself to hear the friction of his hair rubbing on his scalp. Throughout the meal, he was obsessively rubbing his head, totally astounded that he could hear his hair. At the end of the meal, he just about jumped out of his seat when the lady at the table behind me was rolling up her doggy bag. It's really amazing what you don't hear, like the refrigerator or the birds and the traffic. He was really amazed at all that he was missing, but he never knew it. On average, it takes 10 years for people with hearing loss to act on it and finally do something about it. I don't know how long it took my husband, but it was way too long. When a hearing impairment goes untreated, it affects our quality of life and speaking from experience, not just the quality of life for the person, but also for the family members. When you have had moderate to severe hearing loss, your brain actually is affected to the point where its ability to remember common everyday sounds is compromised. This is because the hearing channels are no longer effectively used. The hearing nerves lose their function and no longer channel sounds and signals to the brain. So in turn, the brain forgets these sounds over time and then becomes unable to understand them or interpret them. Is this amazing or what? Give me a comment if you're as amazed as I am. As you progress in the loss of audio sounds, the brain will remember or store sounds and noise recognition for up to three years. But after approximately three to seven years, the memory becomes weaker. So remember, most people wait an average of 10 years before getting hearing aids. This is not good. Do the math. Think about the saying, use it or lose it. If we are not actively using a particular part of our brain, it will gradually cease to function. Just like exercising your body, right? You work out, you get stronger. You don't, you get weaker, just like your brain. So if you can't hear and have reduced hearing capabilities over time, that part of your brain that interprets sounds will diminish its abilities. This is part of the compensatory adaption system, adaptation system of the brain. When this system is affected, it significantly reduces the brain's ability to process sounds because these neurons have been ignored and not in use. They get weaker and they cannot perform their functions any longer. If it goes on long enough, it can affect the person with dementia to be unable to understand speech. Ah, the DBT, the dementia breakthrough. There it is. Comment DBT down below, dementia breakthrough. So this is yet another reason why communication is so difficult for the person with dementia. It's not that they can't hear you. Stop yelling at them. The brain can't process sound due to the damage to the compensatory adaptation system. So hearing is different than processing of sound, but one has a profound effect on the other. We don't hear with our ears. We actually hear with the brain. The ears make a vibration and sends those vibrations to the brain. The brain converts these vibrations 
into sounds and then interprets those sounds into communication. Cool, huh? Can you see how complicated dementia is? It's not just hearing loss. It's a combination of hearing loss and brain cell loss. We can't force the information in. We can't make them hear us. No matter how loud we get, if the circuit or the compensatory adaptation system is broken, it's broken, period, not happening. This is why I keep stressing how important it is for you to learn more about how to communicate with a person with dementia. This is complicated stuff. It's so much more than you think. Communicating with a person with dementia can be very frustrating. At the end of the video, I'll give you some resources for better communication that will help you out. So if the hearing circuitry is damaged, it results in a life, lifelong cognitive deficit. However, sometimes these lost abilities can be regained. This is where it gets really cool. The brain is so amazing. The circuits in the brain are distinct circuits and are specialized to perform specific functions like interpret sounds and language. The brain functions on a sequential basis. It stores and retrieves information like a file cabinet. Then break that file cabinet down into two drawers, one for long-term memories and one for short-term memories. You can probably understand that our hearing must use both short-term memory to produce and understand a conversation and long-term memories, things like birds, chirping, an alarm sound, or even who is the person that we're talking to. So if we introduce hearing aids long after the actual need, the brain's circuit may be damaged to the point that incoming sound signals may not be understood. In some instances, you may be able to retrain your brain to hear sounds, but this adjustment can take months and will depend on how far the dementia has progressed and damaged other parts of the brain. So depending on how long you wait, if it hasn't progressed too far, your brain can and will retain, retrain bleh, some or even all of these lost sounds and memory with the help of hearing aids. But again, it can take time. It can take weeks or even months. So as I promised, I have some things to help you with your communication efforts because we all know that better communication means better relationships, less arguing, and a happier environment. You can't get everything off of a 10 minute video. You just can't. But I have some resources for you on my website. I have several compact and quick result courses for you. Just go to answersaboutalz.org to access some of these quick, quick compact courses on communication. I'm Deborah Costu. I'll see you there and together we can.